Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we'll be getting into the checkpoints of UFT, which are basically the verification steps which can be added as an add-on to the script as well. Now, of course, these verification steps are called as checkpoint where you generally provide an expected input which will be compared to an actual output during the runtime. So you include an additional line of script which has certain expectation about a particular object and their respective property values and that the same will be verified during the runtime while interacting with the application and return you the result either in pass or fail. Now today we'll be getting started with one of the universal checkpoints which is called as standard checkpoint and that would give you an understanding that how exactly this is being used. At the same time UFT also has another feature of carrying the runtime values and storing it in the data sheet which is called as output value and for each checkpoint you do have a parallel output value as well which will not compare the expected and actual but return the runtime data from the execution and store it in the data value or data table as a value. You can definitely have a look on the same. So today we'll be talking about standard checkpoints and standard output values of UFT. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting into the checkpoints in UFT and at the same time, there are also something called as output values. In this tutorial, we are trying to understand the standard checkpoint and standard output values. In order to get started, we need to understand that what exactly the checkpoints and output values are. These are basically to include uh, verification steps in your script at any point of time. And these checkpoints are helpful to e enter expected and actual comparison. It can also be related to a test comparator, which basically compares the expected and actual and gives you a returned output based on each of these verification steps. If you go to the design menu, you do have a checkpoint list available here, but now you see only three of them. But there are many others which you can actually look into, which are accessible once you start interacting with the uh, the application. So that's the most important thing to be understood that offline when you are not in a recording mode or you don't have the object repositories uh, interacting with your UFT, you will not be able to find other checkpoints. But believe me or not, once you complete a simple recording session and the UFT knows about the application, you will find all of the checkpoints being listed here. Now the question comes as we are talking about a standard checkpoint and how we can do that. Of course, that can be done with the recording mode right now, but later, next time, if you want to add any further steps, you can definitely do that after recording as well. Now let's get started with the first checkpoint, which is standard checkpoint. And standard checkpoint is a universal checkpoint, and it is used to verify any type of application object with this particular checkpoint. So it has nothing to do specific to any particular type of object. No matter you're trying to verify an image, text box, drop down list, maybe a button, radio button, checkbox, anything can be verified with multiple properties at the same time. So standard uh, checkpoint is basically used for verifying multiple uh, properties of a single object at the same time. So in order to do that, let's create or go to the application which we are generally using to do the same job. And here we would like to add a standard checkpoint for something. So let's also click on this and get into the application to have more great application objects which you can actually look into. For example, right now, there's a drop down here which has London being selected. So I want to make sure that if it is selected right or not. So I would like to click on record here and just confirm that record on anything. Uh, say OK. Now I'm in the recording mode. I just first add the step to select a value, for example, Frankfurt. And at the same time, I want to verify if that is the right value or not. And here, now you can see all the list of checkpoints and output values. So right now, we're talking about standard checkpoint. So click on standard checkpoint and navigate to that object for which you want to add it. Click on Frankfurt or the supply from field that is drop down and say OK to confirm it. And at the same time, if you see, this will prompt out with all the possible properties which you can actually verify. For example, 
I want to check enabled whether it was true or not and then at the same time if I can want to check the value I can check the text whether it is selected or not and a lot many other things with this and it's not restricted to only three properties as you see there are checkboxes so you can pull out anything whatever you need and you can define the expected result right here for example I come down and select the selection I see the expected value as Frankfurt and this can be edited if you expect something else so press OK to add the checkpoint and just press stop recording now you have two steps in your script one is to select the value and second is to compare the value now being having that open let's try running this uh, just change it to something else just to give you the confirmation and try to run this particular script and also want to show you the result output which will be uh, more interesting for any checkpoint steps to be done and that's what we are looking forward to so now if you look at the result you have a step for the checkpoint as well if you click on this it gives me the expected and actual outcome stating that okay this is what you said me to do and I have tested it and it is was the from city and had the value as uh, the Frankfurt which was selected so again if I go to uh, the details of this I have selected the value as from Frankfurt uh, again uh, if I want to see the details I should be able to see here what the uh, Frankfurt being the input anyways let's try with the failure because right now it's passed so it's not showing me any values and inputs here but it was able to do whatever it was supposed to do and it has passed but in the same thing if I want to try with a different thing for example I just change it to Paris right then of course my expected value is in from city with is Frankfurt and that will be differing so let's uh, have this run on the same application once again and this time it will be waiting for some time to check for the value the reason is there is a independent timeout given to each checkpoint step and that is completely different from your execution steps and global timeout so this step will take 10 seconds by default to check if the Frankfurt appears or not if it doesn't appear it will prompt me with the output stating a screenshot that do you see the screenshot says it is Paris and it was not Frankfurt whereas you asked me to check for Frankfurt and that did not really happen so if I just go back to the results I would see there is a comparison here that enabled was true but selection was Frankfurt as expected actual was Paris and the text was again you asked me to check which was Frankfurt but actual was Paris so this is how it shows me the properties and it waited for 10 seconds out of all possible 10 seconds to do this job now this is where a standard checkpoint can be useful to measure multiple properties and their expected and actual if you want you can change your expected even in the checkpoint so how do you edit an existing checkpoint is the question now so let's go for that and you find all your checkpoints in the object repository and you don't be surprised with that because it was already mentioning you right below that this is where I am so now you will see objects on the top checkpoints and output values here now again if you want you can change your properties or you can edit and modify your checkpoints because here you will only see the name of the checkpoint which is from city right and if you want you can modify the properties to be selected you can change the expected value here and run this test with another step so this is how you basically add a standard checkpoint and run that to get the desired output now let's quickly get into the uh, output value now again telling you the basic information that what is an output value for example this was done at the runtime what if I want to store these runtime values in the data table at the bottom what's data table we will be exploring in our upcoming tutorials but right now what if I want to store a runtime value in my data sheets that's where output values are used now I'll be just adding another step here to quickly compare the same and add an output value so I'll just click on record and instead of going for oops instead of going for standard checkpoint I'll go with standard output value and do the same step that is select the object for which you want to capture and uh, I would like to uh, include this and this time again you can select any number of properties which you want to check for example I want to capture text and I want to probably capture the enable state of it okay and where do you want to place it now if you see you won't be asked for expected values rather it's more of like the location where you want to save it so output type is data table output name is uh, system defined from city enabled out and location is global sheet 
So I would say, okay, let me just rename it because this looks pretty long. So I'll just remove the unwanted text from here and keep it as from city, which looks neat and clean. But which sheet? Again, we have two sheets in the data table. If you want, you can also bring it to environment parameters and store it, but that we will do a later point of time. Right now, let's put it in the global sheet. Press OK and press OK and you are done. Just stop recording and now you'll find that there's a step which captures this information. So right now, as we did it during the recording, it has captured both the fields in the global sheet. So now let's change this to something else. For example, I put it to Sydney and see if this value gets updated. If you want, you can even delete the prerequisite or pre-filled data, which is not really required because this will be filled by the runtime. So let's run this test. Expect it to fail because your expected result is still Frankfurt. Okay, so it will wait for 10 seconds to do this job and uh, you should be pretty much done with those things by the time you come to the end of the execution. But this time you will also see the output values in the data sheet which will be for you to refer post execution. So right now again your expected result is showing that the expected was true and actual was Sydney. Again for the text it was different but the enable property was same. So that worked. But if I go to my test right now and I would see here, do I see anything? No. Then where do I see that? So this is a data sheet which should be created and I'll show you here for example okay I just realized that this has been to move to this part here on the right side so if you click on the test data it should show you default.xls click on this and it should prompt you for opening and uh, it should show you that file yeah you see that now so two properties which we captured during the globe uh, runtime and the value was Sydney and true so it is captured in the global sheet as well which is being displayed to you as a part of the runtime data sheet so again, yeah, earlier in previous version it used to come right here, but now it has been modified to be appearing here. So you have all the information. But just want to acknowledge you that the checkpoint had three properties, whereas test data just have two properties. So it should not be confusing yourself that my standard checkpoint is actually storing the values. No, it's the output value which is storing the value. And both the steps are different, which is checkpoint, checkpoint, but this is for check, this is for output. I hope you had a good understanding of the standard checkpoint and the standard output value. The similar way we'll be working on multiple other checkpoints and output values of UFT. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.